long day, the end to a long week, your mind drifting from thoughts of work to the open road, the big sky, and the sights and sounds of the forest. Just one minute left, then it's the weekend. When the dust settles, it'll just be you and your desire for adventure. Welcome along on the journey. Be prepared to leave the hustle and the bustle of the city behind and embrace the freedom of God's country. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Traveling the country and camping has been a huge part of my life ever since I bought my first Airstream travel trailer back in 2008. Since then, I kept trading up for larger RVs. While it's great to have the conveniences of a larger RV, there have been plenty of times that I wished I had a lighter footprint to be able to go places that I just can't when pulling a trailer. So I decided to convert the back of my 2014 Ram 2500 into a camper. After securing the appropriate permits, aka wife's permission, I started designing what my daughter has nicknamed the Tramper. After sitting down for a week or two with pencil and paper, I was finally ready to start building my ultimate truck cap camper. Now I had quite the list of things that I wasn't willing to compromise on, such as it had to double as a cozy mobile office. It had to accommodate sleeping for two. It had to have a sink with running hot and cold water. It had to have an outdoor shower option. It had to have a toilet. It had to have a nice setup for watching streaming videos at night or during those rainy days. It had to have a microwave so I could enjoy some popcorn while watching said videos. And probably most importantly, it had to generate its own electricity when off the grid. I know it was quite the list, but after weeks of planning, months of building, and about $5,000, I was able to accomplish my goal. So sit back and enjoy this full tour of the Tramper. I placed the water inlet at the end of the bed, allowing the tank to be filled only when the tailgate is down. This secures the water supply from being tampered with, and I didn't have to cut a hole in the side of my truck. Opening the first compartment under the bed reveals a portable toilet. The lid is split and hinged on different sides to allow a toilet paper holder to fold up and lean against the tailgate for easy access and also reveals storage for extra toilet paper. I keep liners handy to line the inside of the toilet before use. Behind the toilet is another storage area where I keep sawdust, composting liners, a can of Lysol, and a privacy curtain. Composting liners may be used instead of standard liners, but with my experience, they will leak if not disposed of quickly. The sawdust is used as an absorbent to add to the toilet before use. I use the Lysol to spray off the toilet and seat after use to keep everything clean and smelling fresh. I made a small curtain to hang up if you were camping with someone and needed some privacy. This typically would only get used if it were raining or it was in the middle of the night and your guest was unable to go outside while you do your business. Opening the second compartment reveals storage I use for some disposable plates and bowls, a few kitchen supplies, the outside shower nozzle and hookup, and the fresh water tank. In this bin, I keep a hose and funnel that allows me to add water to the fresh water tank from jugs when I don't have access to a water hookup. I also store my shower nozzle and hose with a hookup that attaches to the sink nozzle. The hose is long enough that I can stand outside the truck on a bamboo mat and use it to shower. Here you can see the 7 gallon fresh water tank and gravity fill hose. In this bin, I keep a pair of coffee mugs, a pair of drinking glasses, a small measuring shot glass, a large measuring cup, and two pot holders. Opening the third compartment reveals the trash bin, water pump, and the main plumbing connections. The trash bin is made of wood and is the perfect size to accommodate the standard plastic bags that you get at most grocery stores. I stuffed this plastic container full of those grocery bags so that I always have trash liners handy. I decided to use standard PEX water lines and shark bite fittings 
for all of the plumbing. That way, if there was ever an issue when out on the road, you can always find replacement parts at the local hardware store. I used a flow jet water pump and plumbed in a low point drain with shutoff valve and a fresh water tank drain with shutoff valve. I ran the drains out the existing plugs on the back of the bed of the truck and the water tank vent out an existing hole on the side of the bed as I did not want to cut holes in the truck body at all. Opening the fourth compartment reveals general storage space that I used to store the power brick for my solar generator, the aluminum frame for the table, a zippered pouch where I keep manuals for the build components and extra serviceable parts, a small portable 250 watt heater that can help take the edge off on those cold camping trips while running for quite a while on the solar generator, my portable Bluetooth boombox used for listening to music and videos, a dirty laundry mesh bag, a portable vacuum cleaner with attachments, an extra pillowcase, a pair of binoculars, a set of throwing knives because who doesn't like to throw knives, and an extra audio cable. I purchased a pair of strong back chairs because they have fantastic lower lumbar support, which is great when sitting for an extended period of time, and they sit low enough to the ground that allows me to sit without hitting my head on the ceiling of my truck cap. Here you can see the disassembled parts that make up the base for the table. As stated earlier, they store nicely in the fourth compartment when not in use. Once fully assembled, the table frame rests on the side rails and a wooden tabletop is set on top and held in place using some rubber spacers. I designed it to work in conjunction with the strong back chair to make a comfortable mobile office desk. When not using it as a desk, it can easily slide forward to double as a dining table, or once the chair is stored away, it can be slid all the way back and used as a nightstand. It was important to me to include a microwave in this build, not only for the ability to microwave some popcorn at night, but the convenience of having a cooking device that is very versatile and can run purely off of my solar generator. It is not my only cooking source, but very handy to have on rainy days when standing outside to cook isn't ideal or when I'm out of propane. It is secured to the countertop using an adjustable strap. I also take advantage of the microwave's metal body by mounting things such as my Sirius receiver and Max Air fan remote using magnets. This camper build has everything including the kitchen sink. I installed a fairly tall residential style faucet to allow more clearance when doing the dishes and cooking. The sink itself was actually a stainless steel dog bowl that I modified the bottom to accommodate a drain. The faucet does have both cold and hot water. I installed a Chronomite on-demand hot water heater under the counter as you can see here. This is able to run off of the solar generator, but given that it is less than 2000 watts, I don't expect it to get as hot the colder the water is that's feeding it. In the summer months though, it works fantastic. As for the type of soap I use while camping, I prefer Camp Suds. It works great for any application and it's environmentally friendly. For the kitchen countertop, I used a piece of Corian solid surface. To save room, I opted for a small grizzly cooler instead of a refrigerator. There is just enough room in front of the cooler for a small fire extinguisher, some cooking supplies, and a few books as well. There is a small wooden drawer under the cooler where I keep extra soap first aid items, Gorilla Tape, a lighter, and other miscellaneous items. A second drawer under the sink area is perfect for storing some Ziploc bags, dishwashing sponges, and some peanut butter and honey, which I can't live without. The installed aluminum piece not only holds the bamboo flooring down, but creates an edge that keeps the drawers from sliding out. A third drawer just under the sink is a great spot to store kitchen utensils and spices. Notice that I customized the shape of each drawer to maximize the amount of storage space that was available. This drawer is held in using magnetic closers. I had a couple of pieces of bamboo flooring left, so I decided to build an overhead cabinet utilizing the bamboo for the sliding doors. This cabinet is just the right size to store some condiments, paper towels, non-perishable food items, and canned goods. Under this cabinet, I mounted some magnetic LED lights that are rechargeable via a USB cable. 
The powerhouse of this camper build is a Blue Eddy AC200 portable power station with a 2000 watt max output and a 1700 watt hour power capacity. I placed it on a wooden sled for ease of use for sliding it in and out, and I strapped it in to keep it from getting banged up while traveling. I wired in a breaker box for the hot water heater and only plug it and the microwave into the Blue Eddy as needed. I wired the 12 volt system into a small fuse panel and plug it into the Blue Eddy's 12 volt 25 amp output using a modified Weepu SA12 two pin aviation cable connector. I also wired in toggle switches for the lights, fan, and water pump. The solar panels are wired into a breaker as well so that I can just switch it on and off when I want the Blue Eddy to receive a charge from them without unplugging the panels from the Blue Eddy. I mounted three 100 watt solar panels onto a custom aluminum frame that attaches directly to my Thule roof rack. I have one side of the frame hinged and the other side connected to a couple gas lift springs so that I can tip the panels to get a better angle for the sun. The frame is secured using a couple of stainless steel latches that I keep locked when not in use. Under the back end of the truck, I mounted a waterproof 20 amp shore power hookup. This feeds an extension cable right next to the Blue Eddy, which allows for quick charging when available. Again, I was able to utilize existing holes in the truck bed for all wiring and water drains. I mounted two small reading lights at the head of the bed area. They are also capable of working in a night light mode and have built in USB chargers, which are handy for charging the phones at night. I bought a wool blanket and decided to try my skills at sewing, so I cut it up into individual curtains for each of the windows and sewed on some double fold bias binding tape to give it a nice finished edge. I secured the curtains to the cap using snaps and velcro straps. They worked out great and provided added insulation and security. The truck cap window was equipped with a portion that slides open. I wanted to use this for added ventilation, but also keep the annoying bugs out, so I cut out some screen material and secured it to the frame using magnetic tape. The side panels on the truck cap could only be opened and secured from the outside. Obviously, this is a problem when sleeping inside the cap. So I made a locking mechanism on the inside using two pieces of aluminum and a pin. When in the unlocked position, the locking arm swings freely. In the locked position, the locking arm is unable to move. As for the handle on the outside, I had to cut off of a portion of the T-section to allow it to swing in the open position without extending it outward. The back window could only be secured from the outside as well. So I made this custom locking mechanism out of a piece of aluminum that easily slides over the handle locking arm and stays secured using a magnet. Once secured, you can see that it now prevents the outside handle from unlocking the window. For ease of closing the back window, I added a finger loop. And similarly, I added a handle to the inside of the tailgate to easily pull it up into the closed position or gently lower it down. I used the Bugani M118 as a portable sound system when camping. This thing sounds amazing and has incredible bass presence in the truck camper. I made a custom mount for it when watching a movie in bed that allows for it to hang out of the way and yet be in a great position for listening. I added an iPad mount that hangs down over the bed and allows me to use my 12.9 inch iPad for watching movies and videos. It connects to the Bugani via Bluetooth to complete an incredible movie experience perfect for a truck camper. As for the bed, I use three four inch foam cushions when one person is sleeping. I also store four wooden panels against the back wall, three of which are hinged together while the fourth isn't because I also use it for the tabletop. With the addition of three more foam cushions, these panels fold out onto the side rails to form a double bed. On my Thule roof rack, in addition to the solar panels, I also have mounted a Thule awning to extend the outdoor camping space. This is a great addition to help find shade when the sun is beating down or during a light rain shower. I also attach a camping tarp to it to give some privacy when using the outdoor shower. Well that about sums up the tour of my truck cap camper. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you and hope that you may have been inspired by something from my design. It still amazes me just how much can be fit into such a small space. I plan on posting more videos in the future 
So if you enjoy truck camping, consider subscribing to the channel. If you like this video, please hit the like button and drop a comment about what part of the build you like the most. Until next time, Godspeed. Thank you.